Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do a Q&A all about working with clients. So if you've been watching my videos over the past several weeks, you'll know that I have published two videos recently, really focusing on all of the details and all the process that goes into working with a client from uh, beginning to end. So like the very first email that you get from them all the way through the uh, creation of the illustration and the delivery of the final product. And uh, I did it in kind of two areas. One was more focused on packaging. One video was more focused on editorial. Those videos will both be in the description box of this video. While we're talking, you're going to watch me uh, create the demo piece that I did for a Skillshare class, my last Skillshare class, uh, which was all about lights and darks and creating value. So um, with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. The first question is from Brisa who asks, I wonder how you feel working in an industry that's heavily digital. Any pressure, client expectations, or do most of your clients come to you for traditional work? So um, yeah, I really don't mind it. I think I, I'm the most comfortable as a traditional artist. I am able to work digitally. I have done many digital commissions. It's just not my preferred method. The main reason for that is that I never feel like I quite get into that flow state when I'm working digitally. And it's just harder for me to tell when a piece is done when it's digital. For whatever reason, I just feel more relaxed and more kind of in the zone when I'm doing stuff that is traditional, even though it's so much harder to fix your mistakes. I, I can't quite explain it. I just, I feel more relaxed in that environment. Any pressure from clients? I don't think so. I mean, I do get inquiries from clients who want to just confirm whether I work digitally or not. Sometimes people assume that I work digitally and I have to say actually it's traditional. But in terms of a, a client expectation, most of the time what clients want and what they really need to know is that I'm able to remove the background so that they can have a nice transparent TIFF file. TIFF, T-I-F-F, -F, in case you're wondering. But yeah, beyond that, I, I think most clients kind of know what they're getting when they come to me. And if they don't know initially, then I explain it in those initial emails and, uh, and we both get on the same page. So uh, it's not really a huge issue. Next question is from Heather. Have you ever had to revoke the ability for a company to get their JPEG or their final file because of a lack of communication? or otherwise. And uh, I reached out to Heather afterwards just to confirm what, what she was asking here. And the question basically is like, was there any sort of reason, whether it was through non-payment that you had to revoke the client's right to get the file, or if you ended up ever stopping a project in the middle because they weren't communicating well. So the second one I'll answer first, because that's a little bit easier to answer. Have I have ever had to stop something, a project in the middle because of lack of client communication? communication. No, I have never like fully stopped a project. And that's, I think that's because most of the time I get deposits. So it really motivates the client to carry the project through to completion. And, uh, and then that's kind of related to the first part of the question as well, whether I had ever had to revoke that ability for the company to get their, their finished product because of lack of payment, that would be a no, thankfully, if I did, <laughs> I think it's a little bit tricky if you have already Already, so just the wording of the question here, revoke the ability for the company to, to get their JPEG. I can't quite tell if that would mean like, would I not send it to them? Or uh, really you have the most power before you send the client the actual files. So if I had already sent it to them, it would be hard for me to say you can't use it. I mean, I certainly could say you can't use it, but it would be hard to stop them. I would have to like hire a lawyer and write some scary letters and do that sort of thing to try to encourage them to not use it if they hadn't paid for it appropriately. In the end, I have always been paid. Sometimes it takes <laughs> a lot of work, but I, I think the biggest, the key ingredient to getting paid is to getting a deposit and or to working with a reputable company. So we talked about this a little bit in the editorial, the working with clients editorial video, but for certain fields like the editorial one, so magazines, newspapers, it is really uncommon to get a deposit. I've never gotten a deposit working for an editorial client. However, I have mostly tried to work with publications that I have heard of that are reputable. <laughs> and the reason that makes me feel comfortable or more comfortable than just like working for somebody I've never heard of or a tiny magazine I've never heard of is that I know that the, those publications are, um, they're working in, in the industry too. They are aware of the standards and then 
also a big enough name. If it's a big enough name, they're going to care about their reputation. So they don't want illustrators out there complaining about never having been paid. Yeah, I hope that answers that well. If not, let me know. <laughs> Put another question down in the comments and uh, we will get to it at some point for sure. All right, next question is from Francine uh, who asks, have I ever illustrated a book? Just wondering if you have any tips on where to get information in regards to that process. So no, I have never illustrated a book. I've, well, I've, I've had illustrations used in books, but I have never done like the process of being the primary illustrator for a picture book. I have been, since a couple of you have actually asked about this, I have been reaching out to some other illustrators I know to see whether they would be interested in making a similar style of video, but focused on picture book illustration. So hopefully I can find somebody who will be willing to do that. And uh, until then, stay tuned. The next question is from the Artivity Lab who asks, uh, what would you do if a client doesn't pay the kill fee or how do you go about receiving the kill fee? So this is kind of related to Heather's question, I feel like, or it's going to be related in the way that I answer it. The Artivity Lab <laughs> is referring to something that I mentioned in, I believe in the uh, packaging illustration video where I talk about a kill fee. A kill fee is something that you get. It's essentially like a non-refundable deposit. So if the client cancels the project partway through and you've already started on it, a kill fee is a percentage of the project, a percentage of the total quoted amount that you and the client agree you will be paid. And that protects you from, you know, doing uh, all the sketches or getting partway through the painting phase and then just having the client pull the rug out and say, actually, we're not going to, this project isn't going to move forward. The challenging position that you can be in is if you haven't gotten a deposit and then you try to collect a kill fee, that is trickier because you really don't have a ton of power in that situation. The client isn't wanting to use your work anymore. They're not going to, they're not going to use your work. So basically what you have is the contract. Hopefully you have the contract. If you don't have a contract that agreed on a kill fee or you haven't explicitly stated that in an email and have those terms laid out in the email, then there really isn't a lot you can do. But if you do have some sort of a written agreement, but you haven't gotten a deposit, you can try to collect it just by first asking for it and saying, you know, you're sorry that the project isn't going forward. And as per your terms, you are going to be invoicing them for X amount uh, as your kill fee, and then send them an actual invoice for the kill fee. If you don't do that, then the client's not just going to be like, oh, great, let me just hand you this money. You, you will still have to send an invoice just as you would have if you had completed the project. So um, that's if you haven't gotten a deposit. If you have gotten a deposit, it's actually easier. So, you know, say if your deposit was 25% and your kill fee was 25%, then you just let the client know, just kind of reiterate as per our terms, I will be keeping the 25% deposit as a kill fee and you can send them an invoice indicating that that's been paid. If it was, if you got a 50% deposit, then congratulations, that's awesome. And uh, say the kill fee that you negotiated was only 30% of the project, then you would just return 20%, um, the remaining 20% to the client. So hope that makes sense. Next question is from Sonia. When you want to show the client how the end result looks, what do you give them? You said that you only give them the actual files in phase four after they have approved the, uh, the illustration and are satisfied. Yes. So sorry, I should have mentioned that in there. So when I want to show them the final, but I'm not like ready to deliver the high resolution file because they haven't paid yet or because we haven't like agreed on it and there's still other tweaks that need to be made. I just sent a low resolution JPEG just attached to an email and that's usually enough. Occasionally it needs to be not a super high resolution, but a, a better resolution so the client can like get in there and really see and make sure all the details are right. But for the most part, it's just a, a low resolution JPEG attached to an email. And then after they approve that, then I send the final invoice and I uh, send the link to download the files. And ideally in the best case scenario, you get paid before you deliver the finals, the actual high res ready to go finals, the TIFF files. But uh, that's not always possible. So that is that. A few questions here that I have in my document that I wrote down that I copied from somewhere and I didn't write down who asked me. So we have a few unattributed questions and then we're going to move over to Instagram questions. So um, first one is, do you send physical artwork to the client or just digital files? I think I already mentioned this earlier in this video, but I just send the digital files unless it's been negotiated with the client that they're going to have the physical artwork. 
If you are like me and you create work using traditional methods, traditional media, so you'll actually end up with physical work, that can be something that you kind of use as a negotiating tool. You can add, for some clients, you kind of add value by saying that you're willing to include the the originals as a part of the quote, as a part of the quoted price. Even if you don't do that, you should still explicitly state in your terms that the final deliverable is digital and that the original artwork remains with the artist. So I just kind of have that as standard language in all of my agreements, all of my contracts. And then if I want to offer it to the client to say, Hey, you know, uh, this is something that I can add that I can offer to you to add value to the project. If you would be interested in having the originals and it really depends on the client, you kind of have to feel it out. But I think the last time I did that, I mentioned it in a different video, but it was for a nonprofit for a wildlife trust. And so they were going to use the originals to kind of auction off or to give to some of their major donors. So, Uh, For them, it really was a lot of value added. If it's like a a magazine, they probably are honestly not going to care about having the originals. So just use your judgment there. I have the default be that you keep the originals. And then if you want to offer that as a value added to your client, you have that option. All right, next question. What happens if a client commissions you to make something that you don't want to have your name attached to? Is it okay to refuse? Absolutely. (laughs) It is definitely okay to refuse. I have done that before. I don't know if I ever talked about this actually, but there was a client that came to me. This was a couple years ago. And the client himself, well, themselves, oh, well, I already gave it away. The client, the client himself was a big name in the fine art world, somebody who I would have loved to be able to work with and love to be able to have it as a client, have in my client list, even just to like have him as an acquaintance would have been amazing. So this person came to me wanting me to create a series of paintings for their client and the paintings that they wanted me to create. Initially, I liked the idea and we had conversations about it and kind of got into some of the details. And then it became clearer and clearer the more conversations that we had that what they were looking for in terms of subject matter was going to be really problematic for me. And basically, I felt like some of the undertones of the paintings would have been really racist. (laughs) And that was just a line that I was not willing to cross. So I ended up having to decline the project and it would have been a really big project and it would have been great for a number of reasons but because I just felt ethically like I didn't want to have I would have not wanted my name on it uh, because of the content so I did refuse and then on a much less dramatic level there have been plenty of times when I've created work for clients that I just think is tacky (laughs) and I don't like it and I don't want to do I don't want to do more work like it and that's the most important thing is if the work that you created if you want to be commissioned to make more work like that, then put it in your portfolio. And uh, if you don't want to be commissioned to make more work like that, then don't put it in your portfolio. So you can refuse the project or you can take on the project. Personally, if the reason for refusing is just that I think it's tacky or that it's not my style or whatever, to me, that's not really a valid reason for refusing because I do this as my way to make a living. So I need to be open-minded about what I'm willing to draw and the style and all of that. So if it's just an issue of aesthetics and taste, then I will probably just take the project and uh, then not put it in my portfolio. But if it's an issue of ethics, then I would refuse. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, It is kind of a sticky issue, I know. All right, if the client specifically asks for multiple sketches or different versions of each LO, do you charge more? This would depend. So if it's a a relatively small project, like if it's just an editorial project, I'm not usually doing lots of different versions of sketches, but that's somewhat to do with my style. So my style is pretty straightforward. It's not really conceptual. If I were more of a conceptual illustrator, I probably would always be doing multiple sketches. Other side of that is if I'm doing like a really big project for packaging, or the illustrations are more complicated, then I kind of standardly would plan on doing two to three different versions of each at a very rough stage, not not like completely finished sketches, but two to three different thumbnails just to give the client some options and to make sure we're thinking of the same thing and going in the right direction. If they wanted more than that, like if they specifically asked for like six options or something, then probably I would charge more. But even if an editorial client came to me and said, hey, could you actually, you know, if I told them I typically do one sketch, here's how it works. If 
they were to come back and say, would you mind giving two different options? I probably wouldn't charge more in that scenario because it's just not that big of a deal. But if they wanted like five or six different options, then, then yes, I probably would charge more. And you'd have to think through what you want that to be like what percentage of the price that you would have already quoted them. And that's really going to depend kind of person to person. So moving on now to the Instagram questions, this is more of a comment. And this person said, they just said scenario, complete buyout and not allowed to show in portfolio. I feel I was ripped off. That's really tough. So I know this isn't phrased as a question, but I will comment on it anyway. If you agreed to a complete buyout, uh, the reality is that uh, you won't be able to show the work in your portfolio unless you have a caveat in there that uh, specifically states that you retain the right to uh, you retain the rights of authorship and the right to show the completed work in your portfolio. I feel your pain here. I've been in not this exact same situation, but a similar situation where I agreed to a buyout. I did a buyout. I still retain the right to use it in my portfolio, but I didn't include anything in there about like a time limit on when the work had to be public by. So the client ended up never using the work and it was a huge project, lots and lots of hours. And I was actually like really proud of it. And they ended up just, they paid me for it, but they ended up just not using it. And because the the stipulation for me to be able to actually show it in my portfolio was that the work had to be public. So basically it's never going to be public, so I can never show it. So it's not quite the same situation, but I, I do feel you it's, it's really painful. And personally, from the experience that I had, that that taught me a major lesson. And now I always include something in there about like until the work is public or until X date. And you have to give them a lot of time. You can't say like until next month. It has to be like probably at least two years because a lot for packaging anyway. If it's for magazines, then it could be much quicker. But if it's for, for packaging, it can take them a while to get their act together and to get everything produced and to get the new product rolled out. All of that. So I feel you in the the being ripped off. Um, but unfortunately, that is just the kind of the reality for buyout. So there's not a lot you can do in this situation. Uh, now, if you've already uh, completed the paperwork and received the money and they've received the illustrations, you're, you're really kind of stuck. But in the next time, the next time this comes up, just remember to include a little caveat in there about being able to have the work in your portfolio. And sometimes a client will actually, believe it or not, will have issue with that. And they don't even want you to be able to do that at any point ever. And uh, if that happens, my advice would be you would just immediately like double or triple what you quoted them. So you can say, all right, that's okay. I can work with that. It's going to affect the price this way. And the way you can explain that to the client is that especially if you are a new illustrator, but really for any illustrator, a huge part of how you make your living and how you attract clients and build new work is by showing work that you've already done. So if they're asking you to give up the right to do that, that is going to cost you something. So uh, they should pay accordingly. Yeah, really sorry that happened to you. And hopefully next time you can get the agreement set up the way that you want it. Uh, next question. Do you charge different rates to clients based in quote poorer countries? This is an interesting question. It's something I have actually thought about and struggled about. I guess basically I would say no, I wouldn't charge a different rate, not substantially, because the rates are based off of where you live and where you're working and it's what you need to be able to make a living and be a professional illustrator. So the way I would adjust it is, and I have, I have done this before. So like if a company wants rights in the US, that's an enormous market. That's like a really, really big market. So they should be paying accordingly versus if a company wants rights like just in Norway or something. And this is a situation that has happened to me before. Norway is a much smaller market. If it was all of Europe, it would be a larger market, but that's still a smaller market than the US. So in that case, I do charge less because the rate that I charge is based primarily off of use and how the illustration is going to be used and how widespread the usage will be. So if they're working in a much smaller market, uh, I would just adjust that rate because they're essentially getting less value out of it than a company who would be working in a market like the US. I hope that makes sense as well. I feel like I'm saying that after every single one of these. But again, if there are follow up questions to any of these, just put them in the comments and uh, we'll get to them when we can. 
All right, next question. How do you protect your files? Do you put some kind of password on them? I don't do any sort of password. And the way that I protect my files is I just try to wait until the end of a project before delivering. This is probably confusing for you guys because sometimes I'm saying like, oh, you have to you have to do the delivery before you get paid, which is how it works in editorial. And then other times I say, don't ever deliver until you've been fully paid. But that really, it really does depend on the client. And that's your biggest way of protecting your files is not handing them over until you have received uh, an appropriate level of compensation for whoever the client is. Yeah, if it's like a big name magazine, I will regularly make the work, deliver the work and not get paid at all until like four to six weeks later. And that's just kind of standard. So there isn't any way that I like you know, protect myself there. It's just kind of a part of there, there is a risk and it's a part of doing business. And I, I can say, luckily I have never been burned that way. The times I've come the closest to not getting paid and where I've really had to chase down clients are honestly when it's individuals or smaller clients, like smaller magazines that nobody has heard of. Those situations feel riskier to me. So over the years, I have kind of taken on a policy where if I'm working for an individual or for a really small small company before working, I require a 50% deposit and before I starting any work and then before delivering the work, I require the remaining 50%. So I would say if you have any doubt or you feel uncertain about whether a client is going to pay you in full, then just make sure to uh, collect a deposit, number one, and then to require a uh, payment in full before you deliver the files. So that's really your best protection because once the client has the files, they can use them for whatever, you really don't have as much power. So try to judge the situation and just know also that if you're really not comfortable with any of that sort of risk, then like this may not be the right field for you. You are going to have to put yourself out there sometimes. And there will be sometimes when clients are really late in paying you and you have to chase invoices. There's really no way that you can do this that's completely safe or that has no risk to you whatsoever of like possibly working and then losing money or working and then not getting paid for six months. That may happen. So just try to judge for yourself whether that's something you're comfortable with or not and uh, go from there. All right. This one is how how do you deal with a client who keeps forgetting to credit you for a packaging illustration? For a packaging illustration, personally for me, I've uh, I never have that worked into the agreement. Clients don't credit me for packaging illustrations, and that's part of why the rates for packaging illustration are so much higher. Not only does the client get to use the illustration for something that requires a lot more value and it's going to be used in a much more widespread way, but you don't typically, uh, at least in my experience, you don't get any sort of credit. So the only way people know that it was your work is if they also see it on your portfolio. Yeah, I'm not sure what your agreement was with the client. If you had an agreement that they were going to credit you somewhere on the packaging itself, then I would just refer back to your agreement and say something like, hey, I've seen the packaging looks great. Love this or that about it. I did notice that I didn't have a credit on there, that my credit wasn't included as per the terms of our agreement. Credit was supposed to appear in this way and then describe it and then ask what are the next steps for fixing this or how can we uh, remedy this situation something like that and that's probably the same way I'd approach it if you had an editorial client that didn't credit you or some other client that you know a credit line is standard if you uh, didn't receive the credit line just approaching them and saying yeah per your agreement and uh, nicely asking how it will be dealt with. So um, that is what I would do there. So the last question is a little bit different. Uh, it is somebody who followed up on my offer to help come up with just a rough ballpark of a quote. So I mentioned this in a video. I don't remember which one, but uh, maybe a couple of them. But I had told you guys that I would be willing if you had a specific project that you were unsure about, that you were trying to come up with a quote for, that I'd be willing to just give you my input in suggesting a possible ballpark park. So uh, this person is following up on that. Uh, Garar is following up on that. And they told me about a project that would be doing an illustration on a large container, kind of like a barrel, but it was a four-sided container that was going to be for a toy company. So in the toy industry, and it would be used throughout Europe. Actually, it would be used worldwide, but mostly in Europe. And the toy company was a smaller one, but it was one that was well known in the area. And it was going to be really complicated, lots of different 
elements and components and done on a large scale. The total size was going to be uh, 33 by 19 inches, so really big. And they asked for uh, my input on uh, what I would quote for that. If you've been reading the comments in videos, you may have already seen this because I, um, I, I went ahead and answered them in the comments. I would say that uh, a good range to aim for would be somewhere in like the $3,000 to $6,000 for worldwide packaging rights. It would be on the lower end of that number if the client was really small and the illustration was simple, like one giant teddy bear. And it would be on the higher end of that range if the client was large and or the illustration was complex and involved lots of different elements like a teddy bear and lots of different toys. And so uh, they also asked about timing and how long it should take them. They were estimated it would take four to five weeks to complete the illustration. And they asked if that was too slow. And that is really tricky because it totally depends on the illustrator and on the client. But uh, in my experience, most clients want a packaging project done like within four to five weeks total. So this person was saying that it would take them that long to complete just the, the final stage of the drawing. At least that was what I understood. So that would probably mean the whole project would take closer to like eight weeks uh, by the time you counted revisions and sketches and all of that. Yeah. In my experience, most clients want a project, a packaging project done in about a month. And sometimes it's a lot faster. Sometimes it's only like a week and a half or two weeks. Yeah, that is what I have to say about that. And if you have a specific project that you'd like my help with um, in terms of getting you a ballpark or an idea for a quote, um, I would need you to let me know what you what they want illustrated, how big the illustration is, and how complicated, how detailed, and uh, what the client, you don't have to say the name of the client, but who, what market they're in. So whether it's like food or toys or clothing or whatever, and uh, roughly how big they are, and then uh, how, most importantly, how the illustration is going to be used. So on packaging, on editorial, on fabric, on whatever. And some of these things I will know more about than others. I will know more about editorial and packaging pricing than I would, for example, about children's book illustration pricing. But uh, feel free to send me your questions. I will do my best to help answer them and just give an insight. So I think that is it finally for this Q&A. Let me know if you have other questions, you can put those in the comments. Let me know also if you liked this video, if you want to see more Q&As and what other subjects for Q&As you'd be interested in. And as always, thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel, for making it possible for me to have a video editor, which makes it possible for me to put out weekly videos. So all the thanks and love go to them. And thank you to the amazing Meg for editing this video and putting everything together. Meg was absolutely incredible across maternity leave. She edited a bunch of stuff in advance and worked really hard so that you guys would have videos up every week. So give Meg some love in the comments too. And I will probably be back to vlogging next week. So I will see you guys then. And uh, until then, hope you have a great weekend. Bye. Thank you.